quick. Now the general thing you can say about the multipliers and the exponents is that you can classify them and it's a useful classification. You can always sort the set of multipliers of these numbers, real or complex, into three sets. Uh, expanding, marginal, contracting. <laughs> Lambda expanding, these are all multiplier uh, let me say that E is also the number of expanding, such that the magnitude of the multiplier These things are defined as macros in a book. Uh, if you hate them, I can redefine the whole book at one go. Uh, I've exponent in this set is strictly smaller than one, cannot be one. The marginal guys of which we know we have one always. What do you say? Expanding. Should be larger than one. Thank you, Burak. Not thanks the rest of the class. I mean, this was totally criminal. Remember what that English teacher discovered. <laughs> and there might be more of them, but there is definitely always one. I'll call it longitudinal. It means it's parallel to the flow such that anybody in this set has magnitude strictly 1, and it can be complex. It could have a form Li is e to the i omega. In general, we can associate with each one of these things a sign, computer rate per unit time in the cycle, the real part plus minus the imaginary part if it's a complex thing. So it can be complex in which case you say you have an elliptic stability. If you perturb something it just runs on a circle or an ellipse around your periodic point. And finally they could be contracting. So there's a set of these. Now the, the marginal ones you know, if you just take uh, any matrix, there's a probability zero, you'll have eigenvalue one. Yeah. That just won't happen. There's got to be a good reason to have eigenvalue of a certain type. And there are two reasons. One is a symmetry. So when you have continuous symmetries, and the, the one that we already discussed once has to do with that the orbit is not changed by moving points on it forward in time. But there could be, you know, rotational symmetries, spherical symmetries, you know, SU, three symmetries, E8, all kinds of weird symmetries could exist. Each one would have a marginal eigenvalue associated with it. And finally, the contracting ones, The contracting ones, uh, sweetly enough, we don't actually mind if there are even infinitely many contracting ones. So the theory that I'll develop for you works as long as there is a finite number of expanding ones and a finite number of marginal ones and any number of contracting dimensions. And for that reason, even though I'll teach you, you know, ridiculously silly things, I'll show you a parabola, a uh, billiard in a plane, and Rosler attractor in three dimensions, the thing that you're computing. Uh, we actually use this theory in infinitely many dimensions for dissipative partial differential equations like Navier-Stokes. Now some people don't like this multipliers. The problem with multipliers is that when the period gets large, the multipliers can be very big and you know it's hard to write them on a piece of paper. Well these things are rates per unit time and typically in a healthy systems these rates are finite numbers and nothing too big or too too small. So often it's convenient 
to use exponents rather than multipliers to specify stability of dynamical systems. Sometimes these multipliers also have minus signs, which I don't know how to write in this particular way, so you write them out here. Now if you like the exponents, then this classification is that the expanding ones have mu i positive, contract ones have mu i exactly zero, so this part is set equal to zero, though you might be running around, and marginal ones, and the contracting ones are strictly contracting, or the real parts of their exponents, floquet exponents, are negative. All I ask for you in this course is that uh, you don't mix up big lambda and the exponent. A number and its logarithm are very different things. If you look at other literature that people who haven't yet started following Carroll's book, then might, you know, use random letters for everything. So that is, you'll just have to sort it out for yourself. And, you know, because everybody uses dynamics and engineers like other letters, then control engineers or something, and pure mathematicians do something else. But this is the basic classification.